The Sinai Temple clergy, in partnership with the clergy at Valley Beth Shalom, welcome you tonight for a Shabbat that I pray moves your soul and opens your heart. Many have asked me the question, what's the purpose of tonight's service? And the purpose is, if we ever want to achieve some semblance of peace in this country, if we ever imagine witnessing a word in which shalom is no longer an aspiration, but rather a lived ideal, then we must stand and struggle together, listening to the pain of our African-American brothers and sisters, and understanding that with Shabbat we shall more visakor, we observe, or loosely translated, we commit ourselves we commit to a tradition that holds up the value of seeing another human being as a reflection of God. And we remember that the pathway to peace is often a road filled with mountains and valleys. I wrote earlier today that in the watching of the rocket launch, my son asked, is that rocket going to meet God, mommy? And this week I couldn't help but wonder Existing in the world as it is today, does God even recognize the world that was created? We often sing those words. The world is a very narrow bridge, and the most important thing is to not be afraid, but let's admit it tonight. Sometimes we're afraid. Bridges are shaky. Sometimes bridges are so long, it's almost impossible to see the other side. And often through the fear and through the narrowness of that bridge, it feels like the vision of a peaceful tomorrow is miles and miles away like an impossible dream. But we know that if we are willing to step on that bridge together, we're not alone. The purpose of tonight is for our African-American brothers and sisters to know that the bridge is narrow. The bridge may be shaking, but we are here, and you are not alone. Kol ha'olam kulo, we're pleased to welcome Chloe Pomerati. Thank you. 
Please listen to my friend, to my sister, to my teacher, to a woman that has shared her voice and story on the bimas of both Sinai Temple and Valley Beth Shalom and throughout the city and valley, Reverend Najuma Smith-Pollard. Good evening, Sinai Temple. This is Reverend Juma Smith Pilot, and I'm so glad to be able to share with you in this way. Um, my apologies for not being able to be present physically or at least on the, the live gathering uh, virtually, but I did wanna just send greetings and, um, and just really lift up this idea of community. I know the Bible um, gives us instructions about not forsaking the gathering of brethren. And a lot of times we tend to read that scripture and use it to talk about church attendance or worship. Um, but one of the things that I've learned in this season that it's more than just our worship times. It's really about those times of challenge and difficulty. And what we've seen all across this globe is the ways in which people have come together to support black lives that matter, to support George Floyd and his family, Breonna Taylor and her family, and so many others who've lost their lives to police brutality. And we are very clear that all police are not bad police. There are some wonderful, most of the police that I know are wonderful people, um, but there are some bad actors. And so the ways in which community have come together to stand and demand justice is so very important and so key. And so I thank you for allowing me to be part of your community today and to lean into this idea of gathering at critical times like these. Um, I am encouraged by the gathering. I am fueled by the gathering. And what it says to me is to continue in the direction that I'm going as a pastor and ca calling people and community people, to community people together, but also um, doing that across religious lines, across racial lines, um, and just continue to come together because it really is in the togetherness that we build the power. It is in the togetherness that we build the strength. It is in the togetherness that we build um, the energy that we need to overcome any kind of injustice or any kind of challenge or issue that may be facing us individually as well as collectively. Today um, uh, is important to me, not just because of the protests that have happened and the ways in which things have transpired in a positive direction. But today, the gentleman who killed my son on October 27, 2018, uh, we will hold the sentencing hearing um, virtually, of course, because everyone has to stay physically safe. Um, but we'll hold that virtually with the Las Vegas um, courts house. And so I am leaning into 
my community, my family, my friends, and I lean into each of you and each one of you and solicit your prayers and your best wishes for our family at this time. It is a difficult hour, it is a difficult season, but I am hopeful by the community of people that surround me. I'm hopeful by the community at Sinai Temple. I'm hopeful by the community of people um, that I don't know, but continue to uphold the issue that black lives do matter. And so I thank you and I send you blessings. I send you love, I send you greetings. And um, prayerfully this time next year, we'll be able to gather together in person. God bless you. Najuma, that that time comes soon and we hold you in our hearts and we hold the memory of your son in our hearts and we grieve with you. And to translate your words into prayer tonight, we are so pleased to welcome dear friend, Sharma Thank you so much. Everyone, what an honor it is to be with you. And I wish so much that we actually could be together at this very moment. Um, but here from my home in New York, I am with you. Shabbat has always been such a deep time in my life, and I think until recently I really believed that we could lift ourselves up and ascend into some kind of spiritual high just because Shabbat was coming. And I don't know that I feel that way this week. I don't know if there are many of you out there that agree with me. What you said before, Geshert Sarma, oh, the world is a very narrow bridge. And the most important thing is not that we should not be afraid, because of course we're afraid. But the most important thing is to get up when we fall. The most important thing is to love anyway, to move forward anyway, to find our voices anyway, to find that Shabbat, that solace, that pause, that hope anyway. It's an honor for me to offer you three little tastes of prayers tonight um, with my beautiful friends in LA um, and all over the world. Anna Bekoch, it's just a little piece of, you know, it's a small piece of our liturgy on Shabbat, but we learn that the Anna Bekoch is actually the 911 prayer to God. Every configuration of God's name Kabbalistically is found in this prayer. So we begin there. Then we'll give just a little taste of Lachadodi and welcome the Shabbat bride, the, the nurturer, the Shekhinah, the, the Holy One. And then Tov Lahodot Ladonai, which is one of my most favorite psalms in the world. It's so good to sing about God, God's glory, God's divine energy, to sing about the, the chesed, the kindness in the day and the belief at night, in the night when we are alone, when we're, when we're frightened. And it is in that moment we learn that it's not that we are believing in God at that moment, it is then in the darkness, in our hardest times, that God is believing in us. So please join me. Ana bekolach gedulat yemincha tati seruna kabelinat alamcha sanveinu tareinu nona.
בשמחה ובצולה תוך אמוני עם סגולה בואי חלה בואי חלה לך תודי לקראת קלה בני שבת נקבלה. Shabbat Shalom, Neshama. Thank you so much for sharing your beautiful music, your beautiful soul. 
That concludes Kabbalat Shabbat, and I can't think of a better way to uplift our spirits as we begin our Friday evening service, our Ma'ariv service on page 39A. I invite you to please rise for Baruch Hu. We turn to page 40, Ahavat Olam. join together. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha Ve'chol levavcha Ve'chol nafshecha Ve'chol meodecha Ve'hayu Arvarim Ha'ele Asher anochi mitzavicha, hayom alivavecha, vishinantam livanecha, vadibarta baham, vishifticha vetecha, ublechticha vaderech, ushochbecha uvekumecha, uksharitam leot al yadecha, vehayule totafot, beinecha. Uchtav tam al mezuzot vetecha uvisharecha. Take a moment of silent davening.
Vayomer Adonai el Moshe Mor Daber el Menei Yisrael Ve'amarta alehem Ve'asulahem tzitzit Al kanfei vigdehem Ledorotam Ve'natenu Al tzitzit hakanav Petil techelet Ve'hayalachem Letzitzit Oritem oto, uschartem et kol mitzvot Adonai, vasitem otam, velot atoro, achare levavchem, veachare nechem, asher atem zonim achareem, leman tiskeru, vasitem et kol mitzvotai, vitem kedoshim leilohechem, Ani Adonai Elohechem, Asher Hotzeiti Etchem, Meheretz Mitzrayim, Lihot Lachem Leilohim. Ani Adonai Elohechem, Adonai Elohechem, Hemet. Rabbi Guzik and Rabbi Sherman, Rabbi Wolpe and Cantors, it's greetings from Valley Beth Shalom on the other side of the hill, where it's always a little bit warmer, but you can always find parking. And uh, I have to say, it's really nice for all of us to be together. Um, I want to welcome the various pastors who are with us and everyone who's watching online as we try to engage in a circle and covenant of friendship for hope and for healing. As we move into the next part of the service, I want to reflect with you for just a moment about what it means to experience revelation. Revelation itself is always a metamorphosis. It changes us. When a mother gives birth to a beautiful baby, she's no longer just a daughter or a spouse or a sister. She's now something else entirely. Or that moment maybe when you're walking after a long date and someone whispers in your ear for the first time, I love you, you're changed forever. Or even in sad moments when you get the diagnosis and you have to wait to figure out what to do about cancer, or some other disease, you're forever changed. Every time you learn something new and radical, it is a metamorphosis. But what that means is that revelation can't be consigned simply to history books, merely encoded in works of art. Revelation is woven into the tapestry of human living itself. And the prophets are not merely artifacts of ancient Israel, but they continue to inspire us towards history's end, which is freedom and justice. Which means that for some, revelation can be as powerful as crossing a sea or as powerful as taking a knee, or even just taking a breath. But as we turn this service from one of sorrow to one of hope, one of darkness into light, we understand that revelation at its greatest end is about walking arm in arm with each other, and hand in hand, perhaps across a bridge, perhaps across the mall, perhaps just down the street but that we walk arm in arm, hand in hand, as we sing out the words that this is what we know to be true, that this is our God, and this is what deserves our praise, a world of love, a world of hope, a world of promise, and ultimately a world of peace. We continue on page 44 with the words of Micha Mocha.
You may wonder what a rabbi does on a Thursday night. We watch sermons online of our friends. But last night, I didn't watch any sermon of any rabbi. I watched a sermon of a pastor. Pastor John Paul Foster of Faithful Central Bible Church right here in Inglewood, California. Our tradition teaches us, acquire yourself a friend. It doesn't say make yourself a friend, but acquire a friend. And we know how hard it is to make friends. Think about sitting in an elementary school classroom next to your new students in the class, how hard it is to connect. Now think about somebody you don't even know who lives in a place close by, but a place that you really don't know. Last night, Pastor Foster addressed his community and he asked this question, who is your neighbor? Who is your neighbor? And that service began with a beautiful song. It said, do not give up on God because God has not given up on you. That is what we are doing tonight. We are not giving up on God because God has not given up on us. Maimonides teaches us there are many different types of friends, but the friend that we really should acquire, it's not a friend for our own benefit, but it's a friend of virtue. And he explains a friend of virtue is when each intention of those two individuals have the same goal. And that simple goal is to find good and to create good in their society. And so who is my neighbor? I'm proud to present you with our neighbor, with Sinai Temple neighbor, with Bali Beshalom neighbor, with the Jewish community's neighbor. I know that I have acquired my friend over these past few years of knowing Pastor John Paul Foster. And so... It is truly my pleasure and honor to hear the voice of Pastor Foster of Faithful Central Bible Church with us this evening. Pastor. Greetings, everyone. I, I pray, I'm so grateful to be here with you guys. I'm grateful that we're able to uh, join together. Sinai, I just, I love you. I'm so grateful for the communities that are watching right now. Um, I want to I want to just share my heart with you, um, but more than anything, I'm so grateful uh, that you that you're here, and I'll explain to you why. In life, we all know that there are seasons of ups and downs. There are seasons of storms that we hit in our life, and it is in our lives when we are in the middle of storms that we really realize who family is, who our friends are and who our neighbor is. And I think during this pandemic of COVID-19, the coronavirus, I think having to be shut in and having to be safer at home and having to be uh, now on curfew, I think more than ever we learn that um, those that are in relationship with us give us hope. Those who are in relationship with us, those who um, are in our day-to-day -day lives continue to help us to move forward even in the middle of this storm. Many of us have lost jobs. Many of us have been impacted economically. Many of us have had loved ones who have, have been impacted, but it is when we have family, it is when we have friends, it is when we have neighbors that we have hope to triumph anything or any storm that we'd ever face. But there are multiple storms. Unfortunately, I think this is probably the perfect storm where so many things are going wrong at the, right, at, at the wrong time that we're experiencing what we are now. And it is, it is the, the, the pandemic, it is a cultural pandemic of racism. And, and, and it is infectious and it is plaguing our nation and the world. And during this time, I think more than ever that the African-American community, the black community is wondering more than they have ever wondered before, do I have a neighbor? Do I have a neighbor? And when you go uh, uh, to the Torah, when you go to the scriptures, when you see and read Deuteronomy, when you read Leviticus, you realize that there are two key components to how we should do our lives. And those components are that we must love God and that we must love our neighbor. What I love about when you read the scripture, it doesn't just say that we should love our neighbor. It says that we should love our 
you love your neighbor as yourself. King says, hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And I believe and I'm grateful that I know Sinai. I know that my Jewish community, I know that I have a neighbor and I'm grateful for that. And I think that we must stand together, walk together, lead together so that our children aren't afraid because they're black and our children are not afraid because they're Jews but they are loved because they are created in the image of God and we have love for our neighbors. I love you, Sinai, and I really appreciate you dedicating this time and, and acknowledging our, the black community. God bless you, may he continue to give you peace. Thank you so much, Pastor Foster, for your beautiful words and for your friendship over the years. I want to focus on the very last word that the pastor spoke about, which was peace. I don't know if you're aware of why it is that the olive branch is supposed to symbolize peace, but it's because when you plant an olive tree, it can take up to seven or eight years before it bears fruit. So if there is no peace in the land, there is no fruit in the land. We're about to chant the evening prayer for peace, the Hashkivenu. And it begins, Hashkivenu Adonai, lay us down, dear God, lishalom, to peace. Baha'amidenu lechaim, and raise us to life. If you don't lay down with peace, you don't arise with life. You don't have the fruits that life can bring. We join together, led by Chloe. We are grateful to uh, share with the families of Sinai Temple this wonderful moment of learning and prayer and to pray together for hope and for peace. My uncle Henry was taken by the Nazis when he was a young man and he was a slave for the Nazis for six years in Nazi work camps. 
The very first thing they did was take away his name and tattooed a number on his arm. And they tried to erase him. They made him invisible. Because if you can turn someone invisible, you can destroy them without hesitation and without moral compunction. He became invisible. You can turn a people invisible. You can take them out of the world so that we don't see them, don't hear them, don't account for them, don't care for them, their pain, their need, their suffering. They no longer place a claim on our hearts. They're invisible. They're simply invisible. They're not there for us anymore. In the Torah, Moses comes out of the palace for the first time, and he sees an Egyptian man beating a Hebrew man. And he looks this way and that, says the Torah, looking, looking to see if anyone sees what he sees, that a human being is being beaten to death. And he sees no one. The pedestrians on the street, they walk by. The commuters on the street are in a hurry. The bureaucrats have their tasks. No one stops to notice. And Moses realizes that he is the only one who sees this because he's the only one who sees that a Hebrew slave is a human being. And then the next word of the Torah is me'echav, one of his own. One of his own. Invisible people have no substance. They don't cast a shadow. They don't disturb us in any way. And that's the first step in erasing a people. 1945, my uncle was liberated by the American army from concentration camp, came to America and began to find his voice again. Turns out you can't keep a people invisible forever. At some point, at some moment, they say, Hineni, I'm here. Look at me. Feel me. Understand me. Know my heart. Eventually, human beings rise up and they demand to be made invisible. And that's what's going on outside our windows. And that is what's going on outside our doors. People who have been rendered invisible for generations and generations are demanding to be seen. They're placing a claim on the American heart and the American conscience. In the same way that you're not allowed to erase a letter from a Torah, there are 300,000 handwritten letters in a Sefer Torah. But if one letter is missing, even a Yud, even the smallest letter, The Torah is rendered puzzle. You can't use it. You can't read it. Because each letter stands for the human soul. And if anyone, much less an entire community, is rendered invisible, then a society is rendered puzzle. It can't be accounted for. My uncle came out of the concentration camp. He was a very, very angry, bitter man. And then something began to happen to him. As he told his story, as he shared his pain, as he realized that the next generation was listening to him, he began to mellow. And he found something inside of him that was quite remarkable. He found peace. And he found love. Anger is a way of rising up and saying, look at me. And that is what we're experiencing outside. But slowly, anger must turn because otherwise it becomes poison. It is another form of death. Let anger and bitterness and frustration and despair, let it turn to kindness, to constructive creativity, to an open deliberation on what would make a sacred world, a just society, What would it mean to banish racism from our midst and embrace the solidarity of all humanity? What would it take to see everyone and to fulfill the promise that everyone will be seen, everyone accounted for, everyone numbered, everyone raised up, 
everyone living a life of wholeness. Dear God, give us that power. Let us see each other as you see us, as unique and precious gifts, blessings to a world we all share. Amen. Hi, everybody. I'm Rabbi Rotenberg from Sinai Temple. We're going to turn to page 46 and rise for Vishamru. Uh, Vishamru means that the children of Israel shall keep Shabbat. And the Chad Ha'am said, more than the Jewish people have kept Shabbat, Shabbat has kept the Jews. And tonight we pray for rest for all people around the world. May we all find rejuvenation. And as Rabbi Feinstein said, be raised up and live a life of holiness from the gift of a moment's break. Veshameru We'll pause for the silent Amidah. Adonai Svatai Tiftach, O Fihagi, Tehilatecha. Adonai Svatai Tiftach, O Fihagi, Tehilatecha. Adonai, svatai tiftach, o fiyagi, tehilatecha. Adonai, svatai tiftach, o fiyagi, tehilatecha. Hai, radat hai. Ay, 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 My friends, you know, in this time, we might be feeling like our environment is a little bit shaky and, and our spirits need some grounding. So let's take Let's take this moment, let's use this as an opportunity to ground our spirits a little bit, focus on our breath. If you're sitting, feel both of your feet planted firmly in the ground and slow your breath down a little bit. 
prepare your, your breath, your physical body, your spirit, your mind to receive Shabbat. Slow the tempo of your body down just a little bit. You can even close your eyes as I sing these words of healing, this prayer for healing that we all really, really need right now. Inhale. Anna. Another deep breath, inhale. Feel all hearts. Feel all souls. We are very grateful this evening for the many wonderful people who have joined us and are joining us. It is my pleasure now to invite the mayor of Beverly Hills, Lester Friedman, to offer us some words. Mayor Friedman. Thank you, Rabbi, and thank you for the honor of addressing you this Shabbat. First, let me say that the incident in Minneapolis that took the life of George Floyd was absolutely horrible to witness. Millions have justly expressed outrage at the circumstances surrounding his death. The peaceful protests here in the city of Beverly Hills and across the country have called for an end to racism and police brutality which our city council wholeheartedly endorses. It's unfortunate this important message has been diminished by some criminal behavior. Let us honor George Floyd's memory by being together in solidarity with the African-American community and moving this country forward where hatred has no place. As a first generation American myself, a child of Holocaust concentration camp parents, the devastating effects of racism affected my life. I never had the opportunity to be coddled by grandparents because they did not survive the racism of the 1930s and 40s. Perhaps that is why my grandchildren receive unrestrained adoration from my wife and myself. 
As Jews, we need to remember the past and apply the lessons of our life to those who face racism today. It is our obligation. Shabbat Shalom. From our Torah, the Asuli Mikdash Veshachanti Betocham, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary that I may dwell within you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. I want to take you back for a moment to Moses in Egypt. Moses has a child and he calls that child Gershon because he says, I am a stranger in a strange land. And that has been the Jewish experience that over and over and over, we went to lands and countries that didn't want us or didn't want us for long. And we suffered because we were strangers there. And no matter what we did, no matter how we cared or how we served, it wasn't our place. But now I wanna take you to a different dilemma. Because what happens if you aren't strangers in a strange land, but you're strangers in your own land. What happens if this is the land that is yours, but people don't act like it's yours? What happens if you know that your ancestors were taken here in chains as slaves and he took them hundreds of years to achieve the recognition, the presumed equality that all human beings should have. And still, still it doesn't quite feel like home. 
What is it like when your own home is a place you don't feel safe? Where do you go if your home is not safe? I don't know. I can only imagine what it feels like to an African-American child to see the video of Walter Scott running away from a policeman and being shot in the back five times, knowing that had that video not existed, that people would have believed the policeman's account that they were struggling over a weapon. I don't know what it must feel like to that child to see George Floyd cry out and die. I don't know. But I know from our own history what it is to not have a home. The other day, in speaking about this, I asked a group from our own synagogue that if you knew you were about to be born into the United States and you didn't know anything about yourself, you didn't know if you would be rich or poor or male or female or gifted or not gifted, you knew nothing. You had one choice. You want to lead a happy, successful, peaceful life. You're about to be born into the United States. Do you want to be born as a black person or a white person? And as long as you have a better chance of living a happy, successful life if you're born white, there's something wrong with us. Not fair, not home. I don't pretend to know the answers, but I am sure that even from my perch, even outside the African-American community. The problem is as plain as day. And the problem isn't that some people behave terribly and loot and pillage and burn. That's awful. We all agree that that won't lead to the change we need. But it also is terrible if it distracts us from the deeper problem that will still be there when the fire is put out. Because this fire has not been put out for hundreds of years. The fire of hatred, of prejudice. My father, right before I was born, was a rabbi in the South, and he still remembered that as a rabbi in the South, there were separate facilities for whites and colors. It wasn't that long ago. And the lingering prejudices that express themselves in our society, they are still with us. As we learned, if we didn't already know it, to our great sorrow, this past week. So first, we have to listen. We have to listen to the experience of those who experience it, who tell us their home is not safe, that they fear for their children, that they don't know what will happen when that young man goes out with his friends because they know that there are people who will not treat them as they would treat others. And once we listen, then we have to walk together, side by side, arm in arm, until there are no strangers in their own home 
until justice and peace fill the earth in the words of the prophet as the waters fill the sea. Until we all feel safe. Until we all feel free. Shabbat shalom. Oh, thank you. Shabbat shalom, everyone. May we be safe. May we be whole. May we find the day, may we see the day where we can feel and see and live heaven in each other's eyes. May we be one, may we love. May we understand the preciousness of every child, of every human being. This is my song, Believe. May we have the courage to believe and to hold ourselves and each other up even in these dark moments. And may we force the gates of heaven open. And may we force our world and ourselves and the ones who are not yet listening to experience and feel and embrace change. And may we believe. Let us light these lights for the
those who no longer walk this earth. Grateful to God for the gift of their lives, for their sweet companionship, and for their cherished memories which endure. And tonight in particular, we recall those whose deaths and lives moved us to a service of hope and healing. George Floyd, Tamir Rice, Rihanna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and sadly so many others that go unmentioned. And we observed the yard sites this week of Samuel and Regina Adler, Yosef Bar Kohana, Ida Bayer, Lillian Black, Irene Brenda, Mitchell Kleiman, Yetta Korn, Saul Eisner, Bella Filler, Saeed Faruzenrod, Harry Fox, Esther Friedman, Mark Garfunkel, Arlene Gowan, Solomon Gallardian, Nathan Gold, Sidney Goldberger, Jeffrey Graner, William Green, Tova Dershowitz, Sonia Haas, Kanbaba Hakim, Rose Hakim, Lottie Harris, Rachel Harris, Theodore Harwood, Merle Hill, Bernice Horwitz, Malina Kamrava, Nathan Levine, Sarah Leibenbaum, Molly Levin, Ann Levy, Ezra Levy, Susie Lewinsky, Anna Licker, Henry Malamed, Sonia Mashouris, Celia Mostin, Aaron Natch, Aviva Nazarian, Fanny Newman, Aurelia Ordenlis, Ephraim Ordenlis, Minnie Osper, Harry Rappaport, David Ravin, Sarah Rosenberg. Ella Rosenson, Breslauer, Yehuda Roshan, Sadel Rostholder, Anna Rutman, Joseph Sabet, Morad Sadatman, Matilda Salco, Norman Sandler, Raymond Sandler, Alan Satter, Irene Schatz, Sonia Savin, Marshall Savin, George Shane, Toby Shapiro, Nathan Shapiro, Rose Scher, David Sumek, Donald Spivak, Mortimer Steele, Fanny Steiner, Bernstein, Al Stangle, Sarah Sterling, Benjamin Swat, Mehdi Tabarai, Rose Vertley, Helen Wolin, Ida Zoll. We ask those in mourning or observing a yard site to please rise to sanctify God's holy name. In the words of the mourners' Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Yit Kadash, Shemei Rabbah. The Alma, Divarach, Yerute, the Amlich, Malchute. The Chayechon, Yomechon, the Chaye, the whole Beit Israel. The Agala, Vizman Kari, Vimaru, Amen. Yehe, Shemei Rabbah, Mevorach, the Olam, Uomeo Maya. Yit Barach, the Ishtabach, the Power, the Troman, the Nase, the Tadar, the Alevi, the Halal, she made the Kudisha Barifu. The Ela, mean called Birchata, the Shirata, Tushbachata, the Nechamata. The Miram, the Alma, the Maru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba, mean Shemaya, the Chaim, Alenu, the Al Kol Yisrael, the Maru, Amen. O say Shalom, the Roma. Huya, I say Shalom, Alenu, the Al Kol Yisrael, the Maru. Amen. May God who brings peace unto heavens and peace unto all those who mourn. And let us all say, Amen. A special thank you from all of us here at Sinai Temple to Reverend Najuma Smith Pollard, to Pastor John Paul Foster, to Mayor Lester Friedman, to Chloe Cormorati, Nishama and most of all, for our friendship and our partnership tonight with Valley Beth Shalom to your entire clergy, we thank you. And to all of you at home, we show our utmost gratitude for your decision to join us on this Shabbat. We don't take it for granted. Let us remember that the road to a better tomorrow may feel impossibly long, but 
but we will struggle and we will stand together united in peace praying that we will get to tomorrow together may we have the strength to continue on this journey as one community united in prayer and praying for peace. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.